right? And Hello, I'm so happy to be able to meet with Leah Cook today. It is April 13th and um, we're having a little conversation for the Bay Area Women Artists Legacy Project. And I thought the best place would be start would be with where art started for you, Leah, and what um, excited you the most when you were young, what drew you in, what captured you? Okay, well, uh, my mother had been an art major at Berkeley. And so I grew up with art in the family. Uh, she wasn't the exhibiting artist, but art was always considered a part of what you did all the time whenever you wanted to. So it was very, uh, so I, I didn't think of myself as wanting to become an artist. I wanted to become an actress <laughs> is what I wanted to do. <laughs> Cause I, I, I couldn't sing and dance and I played the violin but I wasn't any good at that. So I decided I was gonna be an actress. So that's what I did uh, through my high school years and my first few years in college. Uh, but then uh, I, uh, I changed my mind. I got interested in somebody taught at Berkeley um, political science and it was really interesting theory and so forth. So I, I finally moved, I was at San Francisco State to do theater. And so I moved to Berkeley. I always avoided being at Berkeley because of course my mother went there and uh, her father was a professor of botany at Berkeley. So anyway, you know, I didn't want to be at Berkeley, but I went to Berkeley and it was very interesting. And I got a professor in political science who let me take whatever I wanted. And that's what I wanted. So, you know, I, and I showed slide for art history classes. I showed at San Francisco State, I showed film for the film program, and these old fashioned film projectors where you had carbon art whatever. Anyway, you know, so I had, and I showed all the art history class sides. So I had a good background in art history, but I took classes in anthropology and um, South America, all kinds of interesting things uh, that weren't in the political science department at all. Uh, but anyway, so I had a, a very broad background, but my undergraduate degree is in political science. And I took, I always took painting classes from all the painters at, at Cal and um, took painting and, you know, drawing and everything. But I, I didn't think of it again as a, as a career that I would do. Um, and I think, let's see, how did I finally get inspired to do that? Um, well, I, uh, when I graduated from Berkeley, uh, I wanted to be a ski bum and a climbing bum. So I did that. <laughs> traveled around and I like that because I could be independent and yet camp with all these guys that so you were safe you know but I didn't have to be anybody's girlfriend you know it was it was good and then um I went to Mexico my parents had connections with Mexico and we had traveled there before but I took the Greyhound bus and went to Mexico and traveled all over. That was interesting in 1965, I think it was, for a woman to travel alone at Mexico on the bus. <laughs> anyway, uh, but what I saw was I saw all these incredible um, weavers that wove all kinds, you know, the indigenous people in the mountains weaving all kinds of things. And I, I, I bought a lot of textiles and I brought them back to, uh, to Berkeley. And um, so I taught grade school for three or four years uh, as a way of making a living. And, um, but then I, I started putting together my art background with the textiles. And that's kind of how I uh, started developing my career in art, but but again, I I've always I always had it as a background. So I um, it wasn't that it was one thing that made me turn to art. It's all of a sudden I figured I could put these two together, and it would make very interesting different art. And then of course I found a lot of a few other people in Berkeley. I mean it was the same time that ceramics was huge with Peter Bocas. 
So all the sort of craft and uh, also performance art, all kinds of things were happening outside of the traditional art scene. So yeah. that's what I liked about it. Did you see from the beginning when you were looking at um, textiles and weaving, did you see the possibility of integrating painting and and the kind of manipulation that you were doing early on? Did you see that as an open possibility? Did you already see the way in which you could um, reimagine weaving? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I did a lot of uh, I taught. Uh, well, I went to graduate school at Berkeley finally, but I had met with a group of women uh, artists that had been to Berkeley before. So I, I was with a group of artists that did textiles in a very broad sense. Uh, it was a time when women artists, women actually met with groups to complain about men, but we didn't do that. <laughs> we did our art. <laughs> we shared everything. And, and Berkeley also was a very sharing thing. So we would, you know, travel to India and bring back images and slides and share everything. And um, that's where I learned about the uh, Lausanne Biennial where I exhibited my work right out of graduate school. So I went to graduate school at Berkeley, but I also had this group that we worked together as sort of to develop our careers. And then I taught at Davis for a while and I taught printing. So I, I didn't just do weaving. I also did printing um, and different kinds of textile processes that were more maybe connected to painting, you know, printed on fabric and constructed stuff. So one of the things I was watching was um, footage of you working in the studio um, 40 years ago in a documentary. And you already had um, other hands helping you with the scale and, and yeah. the press and all your process. And um, how, how do you think you were able to um, envision that kind of collaboration in that that allowed you to work on the scale you wanted to scale, to work on and yeah. did that come out of working and and the support groups that you were um, finding in the community I I don't think particularly for that it was more about uh, you know dealing with the broader art world and what people saw and traveling. As far as the uh, support uh, or a lot of artists, I think I just early on got some big commissions. It was a time when you could get buildings where they were wanting to commission pieces. And I did a three story piece for the Embarcadero Center, you mm -hmm. know, in 1974. So I was basically just out of graduate school and I had this three-story commission. So of course I had to hire people to help me because this was very, my process was very physical. So I was, you know, all this stuff wasn't beat with a little beater. It, you did it, but with a fork by hand, <laughs> you know, it was, and I was, uh, the early work that I was doing uh, that I showed uh, was using kind of parallel lines. So I was influenced by optical, like, Bridget Riley's work, various different things. Um, I traveled to Europe in 67, I think it was 67, 68. Uh, and that was my great, that was a really big art education because, uh, and, and tech, I learned a lot of technical stuff with weaving. So I was very interested also in the technical processes and, um, you know, the whole thing with Jacquard and how images could be built. So I did a lot of research and I learned a lot of stuff, uh, technical stuff, but not particularly art stuff. But of course my art education was traveling all over Europe and going to Documenta and I even went to Russia and saw that they just opened their museum there. And, you know, that was, you know, it was a huge art education. Uh, traveling and seeing what was really, and then it's kind of, then I came back uh, to Berkeley and kind of put that together. So it wasn't just, you know, seeing it in Mexico, but it was also the, tra the travel too that did it. 
I'm, but anyway, as far as the people goes, there were big commissions available at that time. You know, so there was a, I did a GSA one for the social security building that's 22 feet wide. So I was able to take this work. Um, and the first work I showed in Lausanne, Switzerland, uh, again, they had a big size. It had to be anyway. So it started out being, you know, I started out having to have people help me. Yeah. So another thing that, that really, um, is, is curious to me is that um, working so abstractly and with so much um, materiality and, and presence of, of the textures and the materials, mm -hmm. you made a decision to move into um, photographic sources. <laughs> yes. And so um, could you talk a little bit about, you know, your impulse to make that huge um, change in well, I've always had a strong connection with photography. So uh, because uh, I saw weaving as built from particles and the photographic image is built from particles. And so I was always interested in that. And one of the early works I did, uh, 75, I think it was, so I did a, a number of pieces that uh, were connected with photography using um, 18th century photography processes where I would make huge, big, you know, ne negatives and take my artwork out into the sun and <laughs> expose it and develop it. So I used old processes, uh, but it, it really had to do with how the imagery was built. It was built from particles. So you know, pointillist painting, um, all of that uh, was, and then some of the early pressed work I did, I actually painted each thread separately, you know, so I broke down a pattern. And also pattern was an important part. And in weaving, there was all this repetitive pattern. So I was very interested in breaking down the pattern. Uh, so the interaction between painting and, and weaving well, it was always a big thing to connect the two. Mm -hmm. uh, so photography was always a part of my work, but uh, when I finally was able to begin to weave, uh, first I wove, uh, I think some of the early pressed work were looking at images of drapery and, and how drapery, again, it was a feminist sort of thing you know, drapery was not the subject matter, it was the whole painting, <laughs> but it, so I made the, you know, the cloth and the drapery as subject matter. And uh, so uh, anyway, um, and a lot of that had to do with uh, how, the, how the pattern was broken down, but eventually it evolved into, uh, looking at the touch of the hand on the drapery and then more the body. And then eventually it got to the face, you know, and the touch of the hand on the face. And so then also the ability to be able to weave things more uh, specifically uh, translated to photographic images. So then I, then I got involved in the working with the faces and I, I think the early stuff was childhood, uh, some childhood images that I worked with. Um, so anyway. So all of this very organic development where the work feeds itself and sort of leads you from one work into the next um, phase and, and sort of dictates what you come, what comes next. Um, have you at any time been influenced by external things? Have you had different things that have impacted the direction of your work rather than coming out of the work that you've just done? Well, I think mostly the my interest in research, you know, whereas, you know, I got involved uh, in researching Jacquard stuff, you know, way before I ever used it in any work, uh, you know, and I went to uh, VNA and England and looked through old, images and old 
woven things and all kinds of stuff. So I think in a lot of, and then uh, the neuroscience stuff that I've done uh, wasn't, I didn't, I didn't go specifically for that. What I went for was the emotional response that people had when they looked at a woven face in that case, but a woven, something woven, they were very, they wanted to touch it and they couldn't touch it. And then, so they had a bigger emotional response. So that's why I went to the, uh, to work with the neuroscientists originally it had nothing to do with the brain fibers. In fact, they said, you know, oh, you can weave a brain. And I'd say, never, never, I'll never weave a brain, <laughs> which I ended up doing. But, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think for me, it's research and, and I'm sure there are avenues that I researched that I never used. You know, but there always was this interest in researching something that didn't have a particular connection, or maybe it had a little connection, uh, but it wasn't specifically to do something. It just was, I wanted to do research, yeah. you know. So I guess that's, uh, oh, and other, of course, there are other influences in the art world, you know, of, um, but not, you know, not, not hugely. I mean, I'm trying to think of what. Uh, no, I can't think of it right now. But anyway. uh, so, one of the things um, that I think is very striking about your work is that, um, unlike photography, that um, can be a very fast read for the viewer. Yeah, your work really slows the viewing down. Right. The weaving with 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 the threads, with the patterns, with with the textures, with everything, the dimensionality of it all. And I think about you at your loom, which is also a very slow kind of work and 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 involvement. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the state that you're in as you're working and and how it it changes and shifts from um you know the the beginnings through the long mid part through the ending and and your relationship to the whole process and how um you feel about what that work demands and demand should demand of the viewer well um for one thing uh i like the structure of the loom i like the fact that I had a given structure. So I had certain control, you know, certain things you could and couldn't do. And you had structures and then you could play within that. And that I like that. Uh, and I think uh, the process itself uh, is, you know, I don't know, very meditative, very, you know, you can think about a lot of things as you're doing it. It's physical. Uh, so I think um, that that was an important part of me, but but just thinking about weaving it and the structure of it, I just I like I like the structure that I could play against, and um, and also it was as I said it I think before it's an area where there weren't a lot of people exploring, and I could just explore in many different directions, whereas if I was painting, you know, I'd have to be a little bit different from this painter, a little bit different from that one, but you know, I, I really like the area of exploration. So then you, what was your second question? I said, um, do you have expectations of your viewer? Oh, that's yes. That's a question. Yeah, there. yeah. So I haven't, I, I, what happened with the viewer is that it happened. I didn't realize that the, the emotional response people would have or the tactile. I didn't, uh, I didn't actually make things specifically to have that response. In fact, in most of my work, I don't, I don't uh, even the uh, portrait ones, I don't make it specifically so someone looks, feels sad or I want people to bring their own experience to it. So I'm making something that is, uh, which I see as, uh, has that tactile emotional response, um, but uh, I, I don't want to control what it is that they're experiencing. 
you know, I just want them to experience, <laughs> to, to have an experience. And the thing about the uh, difference between the photo image and the, and the uh, woven image is that my work at a distance, you could just walk by it at a distance, say, oh, that's a photograph. You, you don't know, you only have, you only experience it when you move up close. And that's when everything happens. You know, the closer you get, the more the image breaks down, the tactile becomes visible and the whole involvement, the movement, movement in relationship to the work, when you move, how things change and um, all of that. So more recently, I've been thinking, you know, I think I want to make it even more visibly tactile because I think it, it's more, uh, it brings a larger group of people in to see it. You know, if you don't know, if you don't want to walk up close and see actually what it is, then it's just a photograph, you know, at a distance. So I, I like the idea of um, making things more tactile right now, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I think one could argue that if we don't slow down and look, even looking at a photograph, it's only a photograph. As soon as we slow down and look at it, we see that the photograph is actually something more than we think a photograph is. Yeah, you're right. Greater yeah. attention. And, um, and I think, I think I would argue that your work does that even at a distance because I think it brings up a lot of questions. I think that in looking at it, it doesn't appear as a photograph, even at a distance, but that it's something that um, it, it presents in a way that is somehow unfamiliar. There's always an unfamiliarity about it. Right. It's what intrigues me about your work. Mm -hmm. um, but you go through, you can take an image and you can work through many different iterations in your weaving of, mm -hmm. of color, of breakdown, of reduction, of abstracted um, representation. And so I wonder, um, you know, in terms of your own visual investigation, how you lead yourself through those kinds of iterations. Hmm, interesting. Um, I don't know exactly. I mean, I think I just, uh, I'm not, I'm not, planning a whole piece at once, you know, like the Sioux series, I just started, you know, making them and, and I'm moving ideas from the various different avenues. I'm doing uh, some neurological brain imaging, some just with color, some with just black, you know, I'm just sort of experimenting. But the whole idea, again, is a structure. It's the same image, it's the same size, you know, and it has all these limitations. I always use cotton and rayon. The rayon I have it has the reflective core. So there's certain materials that I use, uh, but I'm basically experimenting. And then it becomes, you know, first I showed it as the first set of of the same image, I showed five pieces of this doll face that I was doing. And that's when the response was, oh, that one's angry, that one's sad, that one's, I, you know, they, people had these incredibly different experiences. And so that sort of made me, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a hundred of these pieces, all the same image and see what happens. So it's, it's more like an experiment, I guess. Like I'm not planning a whole thing mm -hmm. that I then do. <laughs> and I ended up with the Sioux series probably doing the 32 pieces and then I, that's enough, you know, <laughs> I need to move on. <laughs> but, you know, I have some people who do, a, they, they plan to do one piece a day for a hundred days or something, you know. <laughs> I do that regularly and after two or three days I just on to something else because I can't I I can't imagine how um for instance Joseph Albers could have done what he did over the length of time and I I think what what happens is it takes a very very high degree of attention actually 
-hmm. to be attuned to the the subtleties of those kinds of um variations and and the impact and and shifts that are so subtle and um you know quite on the opposite spectrum i love drawing because in two minutes you've got something there you know you've got your marks but um has the process for you has the work changed over time your relationship to the work to your work yeah well the the work has changed over time. It, yes, but, I mean, that that becomes difficult when you go to talk about this work, which visually has changed, you know, over time. Um, but you're asking what my relationship to the work has changed. Yes. And, How you, you know, feel about it, the meaning it holds for you. Um, yeah. Well, I think, you know, uh, uh, it has obviously changed changed over time, especially in terms of scale. I'm not interested in doing big scale work. You know, I'm I'm more interested in even smaller and smaller. You know, and just uh, so that I can make smaller informal kinds of changes. And uh, and then the recent work I've been doing has been interesting. You know, just digging up work from the past, taking photographs from that and integrating that with my current work now. And that's kind of interesting, you know, trying to sort of blending it together in a different way, you know, so. That's anyway. amazing. So rich and so much to look forward to. And it's been wonderful talking to you in your studio. Thank you so much, Leah. Okay, well, thank you for doing this. Okay. <laughs>